Okay, so there's been a lot going on in the news, um, as there always is. Otherwise, I would have covered this um, this earlier. Um, last week, a uh, vehicle went on the rampage, or more to the point, the driver of the vehicle went on a rampage um, through, through downtown Toronto. I don't believe it was quite the city centre, but um, near enough. And uh, in this rampage, 10 people lost their lives. Now, I have to admit, my first response to this was, OK, this is another Islamist attack, because this was the modus operandi uh, that was used here in the Westminster attack, in the London Bridge attack, in the Nice attack, um, in the Berlin Christmas market attack in Barcelona. So it's certainly a method that has been increasingly used by Islamists. And I thought the reluctance to mention that at first was, frankly, Canadian political correctness. Um, I was wrong about that. It wasn't an Islamist attack. It turned out to be a, um, something quite different. Um, now, the question of whether or not it should be still classed as a terrorist attack, um, certainly it's as bloody as a terrorist attack. This is um, one of the deadliest incidents um, to take place in Canada. I think it is the deadliest, actually, since the... They call Polytechnic Massacre in um, Montreal back in the, I believe that was back in the 70s. So, um, or at least or the 80s. So, it's a shocking incident. So, what do we know? Um, the guy who's been arrested uh, survived. Um, Alec Manassian, he's in his mid-20s. There's been a lot of praise for the police officer who managed to apprehend him without um, without shooting him. Uh, that may be a good thing, although I'm in favour of shooting terrorists, it may be a good thing insofar as understanding uh, motivations of this and understanding if there is more potential attacks. Now, there is an aspect of this case that definitely stands out and seems to be almost the first. I say almost the first because there's other cases that we that are still undetermined and there's still debate over the exact motivations. Hopefully I'm not going to be cut off in this video because I think it's very important to discuss these issues. So, this guy Alec Manassian, uh, like I say, in his mid-twenties, um, he claims to be acting out of an incel rebellion. And he has indeed been linked to so-called incel groups online. Now, incel in this context means um, involuntary celibates. And although this is something that impacts women as well, it's almost, because of this case, unanimously being linked to angry young men. Now, I have to say, some of the commentary and some of the speculation bothers me. And this is why. Um, there's no question that this guy um, was acting out of misogynistic impulses because most of those who he mowed down were women. And uh, before I misunderstood, it goes without saying this was a shocking incident. It was an evil act of violence, and I hope he's, you know, I hope he spends the rest of his life behind bars. Um, you know, to mow down strangers like that is completely heinous. But the responses I've seen since this, particularly in relation to the involuntary celibacy issue, frankly indicates to me that there is still an enormous amount of ignorance in society, in Western society, over this issue. So let's let's be clear about something. Involuntary celibacy is a very real thing. But I believe it remains one of the big taboos of Western society because, let's face it, for men especially, and it does impact women as well, but for men especially, being a virgin in your 20s, 30s, 40s, there's a stigma around that. And the general attitude is one of ridicule, disbelief, or even fear. Because there's this perception that men who haven't got laid by, let's say, the age of 25, they must be losers. They must be a bit weird. They must be, etc., etc. I mean, there is the classic scenario, right? You have a group of young guys, let's say in the late teens, early 20s. 
It's a lad culture. And they will brag about how many girls they've slept with. And they say one of them hasn't had sexual experience, which is very likely, because not everyone has at that age. The chances are he will lie about that because he does not want to be ridiculed by his so-called mates. I think this aspect is something that cannot be overlooked. Now, the problem is, because there is no, because this is a subject that is ridiculed, you know, sex is promoted everywhere. It's promoted in film, it's promoted on television, it's promoted on advertisements. And I'm no Puritan, but that's a fact. It is everywhere. So without understanding the loneliness, the extreme loneliness, frustration, and social isolation this causes, then unfortunately what's going to happen is angry and isolated young men are going to gravitate towards these sort of obnoxious groups. And in some cases they will blame women, which is obviously absurd. You know, they'll have an entitlement mindset like, uh, and there was a previous case in the States um, a few years ago, I forget the killer's name, but he uh, deliberately targeted young women because they rejected him. Now my concern is that as a result of these individuals carrying out these sort of attacks, people are going to then assume that all male involuntary celibates are misogynistic extremists. The fact of the matter is, there's probably a lot more people out there than we realise who are in this position, but they can't talk about it. They can't talk about the loneliness, the isolation that they feel. And there's a huge difference between involuntary celibacy and voluntary celibacy it is a real phenomenon. You know, you get people who don't want to have sexual experience at a younger age or until they're mar married. Maybe it's just for religious reasons. Maybe it's because that's how what they feel is right and wrong. But the fact of the matter is, if, you know, outside that religious aspect, sexual desire, consensual sexual, you know, the desire for consensual sex is absolutely human. So if you're surrounded by a, in a society, and I'm not blaming society for what's happened, don't get me wrong on that, but if you are surrounded by peers who have all supposedly had sex before you have, and you're in your late 20s, your 30s, it's frankly, you know, it's very easy to see why that would be very polarising. And if the attitude to this is just to laugh at it, then I fear that this is problem is going to get worse. This guy spoke about an incel rebellion. That is disturbing because it's indicating that other angry, alienated young men out there are going to take these sort of extreme measures. And, you know, that's no... There's absolutely nothing justifies that. It's horrendous. And it's only a minority who would take that misogynistic attitude. There's a lot of um, involuntary celibate men who don't hate women, who have female friends, who get on well with women, but for whatever reason, they just haven't had sexual experience. Maybe it's financial. You know, maybe they haven't had the means for social activities. There's a lot of reasons. Some people might be restricted possibly because of a disability. And I'm not stereotyping, by the way. I'm just saying that that might be the case with some people. So I feel a bit frustrated that so many people are responding to this with the very mindset that pushes these young men to these sort of websites in the first place. Um, you know, if you, if you think that the problem you have is going to be ridiculed, you're obviously not going to talk about it. And I'll be quite blunt here, I lost my celibacy later than most people my age. I'm not a virgin, I've had experience, but I can tell you that those years of being alone were sometimes very, very difficult. And I do think that it's very difficult for young people in this position. It doesn't in any way justify what happened, but just looking at the comments and editorials and opinions I've seen so far on this demonstrates to me this is one of society's last great taboos. And the wider public, that is people who have had a regular experience of losing their virginity, say, before 25, um, 
you know, that there is a massive lack of understanding out there. I find that concerning. Because right now there will be people out there who are involuntary celibates, but that doesn't automatically make them misogynists. True, there are some guys who will blame women, which is utterly absurd, and that mindset needs to be challenged. Also, the idea that they're entitled. But, you know, sexual desire is totally human. So, of course, people are going to feel isolated if it's apparently never happening for that, them, for whatever reason. It could well be their attitude to women, but it could also be, you know, that they just haven't had the opportunity. And if you look at the social attitudes of this, frankly, the overriding attitude is ridicule. Now, I think that's a problem. I think that needs to be addressed, you know, because people who are deemed to be virgins, it, it's still a point of ridicule. People in that position will find themselves bullied and, you know, subject to all sorts of jokes. And that, to me, is really, um, frankly, tragic. I think it's disgusting, actually, um, because I remember how how lonely that was, how frustrating it was. You know, I got on well with women. I I never blame women for that problem, but it was just a range of social issues. Um, I just didn't have the opportunities to meet women and develop a relationship. Things have subsequently changed a lot. So, but, you know, I am saying this candidly to try and, I don't know, spread awareness that this is a real issue. And unfortunately, this guy went down a very extreme path I hope he's punished for what he's done. Because I mean, you know, to take it out on 10 random strangers is appalling. But anyone that thinks it isn't a real phenomenon or anyone that whose first, my, first attitude to it is to laugh, sadly, we're going to see more cases like this. So what's the answer? I think there needs to be um, maybe more criticism of that bullying attitude, um, you know, of the stigmatization that people who are in that position feel. And I, I think that people shouldn't feel ashamed or embarrassed about saying, yeah, I, I want sexual experience. I don't apologize for that. I hate the way, because I find that the, they sort of run up against this. There's two types of judgment. There's people who've had experience and think they're losers. Or there's religious people who think that they're only interested in sex. It's not about being only interested in sex. It's about wanting a basic human desire. That, to me, is common sense. There's nothing weird about it. There's nothing unusual about it. But like I say, these sort of groups, and I don't know if this guy was a member of a specific group or not, but in the end of the day, if they feel they have nowhere else to turn, they are going to gravitate towards groups they feel will be like-minded. And I've heard these groups compared to Islamists, which is certainly concerning. I've no doubt there is misogyny within there, uh, within those domains. But, you know, there are women who suffer from involuntary celibacy as well. So I feel quite frustrated that there's so much misunderstanding in society. And, you know, because of this Toronto incident, now people are... The general attitude I've seen from editorials and general opinions is... Oh, all involuntary celibates are woman-hating extremists. That's absolute rubbish. It's like, this isn't maybe the best comparison, but take Tourette's, for example, Tourette's syndrome. When we think of Tourette's, we tend to think of people swearing profusely at random strangers. Actually, that's only 10% of Tourette's cases. Likewise, the majority of people who are going through involuntary celibacy don't hate women or don't hate men. They just find themselves having to wait a lot longer than most people. And that's, you know, very polarizing and very difficult. And it would help if society wasn't so immature about it, you know, if um, there isn't really any easy answers. I mean, it's not like, although I would say this is one area where regulated prostitution might actually be an answer. And that's maybe for another video. but you know, regulated sex work um, gives that outlet to people who aren't getting sexual experience as consensual. Uh, and if it's regulated, that's safer for